Welcome to module 50 of Point Set Topology Part 1. So let us continue the study of half stars nest along with compact nest and so on. Last time we gave some applications to, to function analysis, not linear spaces. In particular, we showed that every uh, nonlinear space in which the unit sphere is compact, then it is finite dimensional. Of course, we did uh, many other things like we showed that the, the entire of Rn no matter which uh, norm you take, is a cone over the unit sphere. When you change a norm, the unit sphere changes, but the cone over the unit sphere is always homeomorphic to the underlying linear uh, space, Rn. So this is what we have seen. So let us continue that as a consequence of the discussions last time, we also get the following theorem. Let S and D denote the unit sphere and the unit disk respectively with any norm on Rn. Remember, if the RA, if the norm we have taken L2 norm, then I have a different notation. I have special notations for this. This is the general notation for any Rn. Then they are means S and D are respectively homeomorphic to the standard Euclidean sphere and the standard disk. Okay, so this is a consequence of our uh, discussion last time. However, let us just go through uh, the, the proof carefully, what, what is finally involved in it. Okay, fix any arbitrary norm on Rn. We know that it is continuous and non-vanishing on the standard unit sphere Sn minus 1. The norm is a function into R, right? R plus actually. Restricted to Sn minus 1, we already established that it is continuous. Now, what do I mean by continuous? Now, I can take the, the standard L2 norm on Rn. With respect to that, this function, which is a norm on Rn, is also continuous. This is what we have seen. In particular, on the sphere, it is non-vanishing. Therefore, 1 by norm x is also continuous. Okay, so it follows that if I put lambda x equal to x by norm x, then this lambda is from Sn minus 1 to S is continuous. You see, this you have to be careful here. This is the, the new norm. Sn minus 1 is the standard norm. Okay, so L2 norm. L2 norm is 1 doesn't mean that this norm is 1. So I have to divide by this so that I get into this capital S here. Okay, so x going to x is continuous, 1 by norm x is continuous, the product will be continuous. Okay, likewise, if we take mu x equal to x by L2 norm now, so the role will be reversed now, domain and codomain, then mu will be a continuous from S to Sn minus. What is easy to verify is that lambda and mu are inverses of each other okay therefore each of them is what a homeomorphism one is the inverse of the other once that is the case you can take the cone over cs minus one which is d 
is homeomorphic to cone over C s. Okay. This is D n here. This will be the, the D here. So this also we have seen. That is the thing that we have seen last time. Okay. The first one C s n minus 1 is D n. The second C s is the, the unit is with respect to the, the extra norm, usual norm, unusual norm. This is the usual norm L2. So once two spaces are homeomorphic, their cones over them are also homeomorphic is one of the theorem that we saw last time. So now let me take a, a genuine <laughs> example here, which you may have all be interested in. Maybe I will try to first stop and we have to stop this presentation and then do something. I wanted to show you a piece of string. Can you see that? What does it represent? I mean, how do you represent this by a mathematical object? So you can either say this is a closed interval when you include the endpoints of the string or an open interval or a half open interval. There is no other way to represent a half open interval or open interval or closed interval. All of them are represented by a string. I have to tell me what it is. Okay. So this is, you can say it is 0, 1. When you identify just 0 with 1 and nothing else, what do you get? You will get some object like this, which is a model for S1. Okay, actually, the model is S1 is a model, but this is, is not, this is the object, whatever. It doesn't matter whether it is like this or like this and so on, up to homeomorphism, this is S1. So, all this we know that, you know, a layman will understand that this is a circle. Now, mathematically, we want to rigorously say that identifying the endpoints of 0 and 1 gives you S1, right? So that is what I want to rigorously prove now. Now that was the, that was my main interest here, okay? Okay, so let me go back to the slides. Okay, so, so let us uh, do this business, namely, let us prove that the quotient of the closed interval 0, 1 by the identification, namely the endpoints 0 and 1 are identified is actually S1. Okay. So, I will denote X by 0, 1. Okay. I don't have to take any other interval because they are all uh, homeomorphic to 0, 1. Any closed interval is homeomorphic to 0, 1. That we know already. So define an equal, define a relation. 0 is related to 1. 1 is related to 0. X is related to X for every X. So this is a equivalence relation. Okay. There is no other, no other uh, rule here. Okay, now let Q from X to X by R be the quotient map. This X by R, which is quotient topology, we want to show that is homeomorphic to S1. Our task is to show that it's homeomorphic to the unit circle. Okay, to get a homeomorphism, we observe that whenever you have a quotient space, what you do is you construct the function on X itself, on the mother space itself. Okay, but now what we observe is X is compact, therefore X by R is compact. And S1 is Hausdorff. Then one of the theorem that we have tells you that if you have a continuous bijection, then it will be automatically a what homeomorphism. So that is what we are going to exploit here. Okay, but now to construct a function 
from x by r to s1 we appeal to this uh, lemma which we proved long back so what was this when you have a quotient map x to y okay given any function f from x to z that is a unique function f f twiddle from y to z such that f twiddle composite q is f if and only if this happens okay whenever two points are identified by q the same thing should happen to the function that you are interested in that should also identify those two points this is the condition of course now our uh, notations are slightly different x to x by r is the same that is q i want to get a homeomorphism here okay to get a map here i should have a map here first of all such that gx is equal to gy so whenever x is not equal to y implies only x and y are you know the pair 0 1 either x is 0 y is 1 or y is 0 and x is 1 that is is it an order pair is the same okay why i have put this one because finally i don't want any more identification here i want this one to be injective okay i want first of all this function so it must have 0 and 1 should be gone to the same point here so g must have that point g of 0 must be g of 1 okay otherwise you know otherwise there is no equality i mean g x, x is not equal to y okay then g x will be not equal to g y so such a map is readily available to us already this you don't have to hurt for it take g t equal to e power 2 pi i t restricted to 0 1 When t is zero or t equal to one, it is the unit of S one, and everywhere inside it is injected. So when you come down here, you get a continuous function, which is injective. But G is already surjective, so this surjective also. So this becomes homeomorphism because x is com x by r is compact and S one is also. let us go to some other example now namely the projective space pn we haven't much studied much of it but we have we have studied its definition so i will recall the definition so projective space pn the real projective space is called there is a complex version also as you may appreciate it is defined as a quotient of non zero vectors in rn plus 1 by the diagonal action of r minus 0 namely r comma x not x1 xn goes to r x not r x1 r xn so it's also scalar multiplication you may say diagonal action or scalar multiplication okay we have then claimed that this quotient map when you restrict it to Sn, namely unit vectors, is also a quotient map. That time it was an exercise for you. Now this claim easily follows from our earlier theorem. Why? Because now Sn is C. Sn is compact. Okay, and and what we have shown is that it's a closed map. Okay, so this will be also a quotient map now. Okay, S into P n. It's easily seen that it is surjective, surjective continuous map. But now, because S n is compact, the function will be a closed map. Every such closed subset is compact, is compact, and what the image of a compact is compact. A compact subset of a Hausdorff space is closed. so that was the theorem okay so you can use that it follows that s into pn is also a quotient map of course it is not bijection so it was derived to be homeomorphism here 
एंटीपोडल में एंटीपोडल पॉइंट x एंड माइनस एक्स आर मैप टू द सेम पॉइंट ओके दिस क्वेश्चन इज इजियर टू अंडरस्टैंड नेमली इट इज अंडर द एंटीपोडल एक्शन x गोस टू माइनस एक्स एंड बोथ ऑफ दम एक्स एंड माइनस एक्स गो टू सेम पॉइंट ओके सो इन पर्टिक्युलर वाई आई टूक दिस एग्जाम्पल नाउ इट विल फॉलो दैट पी एन इज कॉम्पैक्ट ओके वी डिट हैव दैट वन दैट पी एन इज कॉम्पैक्ट हेयर सो ओनली थिंग वी हैव टू बॉडली वेरीफाई इज दैट पी एन इज हाउस डॉर विच इज नॉट वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू वेरीफाई द एंटायर एक्सरसाइज हेयर you don't have to worry you have to just say that pn is house door that much you have to verify then only this theorem can be applied okay so now i would like to take a, a different uh, game here recall recall that we had defined an embedding long long back maybe of a topological space into another space y what is the meaning of an embedding it means a continuous injective map such that when you restrict f from x to fx not the whole space y this is a homeomorphism where fx is given the subspace topology from y so that was the definition okay beyond definition we have not done much now at least we will have some examples here so now i specialize to the case wherein n is equal to 2 so look at the projective space p2 of dimension 2 which is quotient of s2 by antipodal action okay what i want to do is i want to explicitly write down a embedding of s2 inside r4 sorry embedding of p2 inside r4 s2 is embedded in r3 s2 is a subspace of r3 right by definition but p2 i would like to embed inside r4 why because for some reason i am not able to embed it inside r3 actually a deeper theorem in in uh, algebraic topology will tell you that you cannot embed p2 inside r3 okay notions such as orientability etc have to be studied to understand that <clears throat> okay so to get such a function what i should do i should construct a function from s2 to r4 such that fx is equal to f5 if and only if x is plus minus y then i will get a map f bar from p2 to r4 okay if this is if and only if when you come here it will be already injective mapping if fx is equal to pi if and only if x is plus minus y then the corresponding function f bar from p2 to r4 will be injective once again this is compact that is hausdorff so f bar from p2 to f of p2 f bar of p2 that will be homeomorphism which means f bar is an embedding so task is to find a function f from s2 to r4 which has this property points are mapped to same point only if they are antipodal otherwise they are distinct this is what i have to do okay so hunting around various examples it turns out to be a pleasant surprise that we can do it with a quadratic embedding namely you know when you whenever you have uh plus minus x going to same point so the natural thing is to look for quadratic function x square y square x plus y square x square plus y square and so on the combinations so they will have this property right homogeneous quadratics 
and a hunt like that will is actually giving you that so naturally you can try x y z are three coordinates here remember i am restrict i am only interested in inside s2 okay not the whole of r whole of r3 this will make sense in the whole of r3 no problem because we are polynomial function look at xy xz and yz these are obviously three easiest things of course i could have taken x square y square z square but there will be a problem suppose i take x square y square z square would it work finally even xy xz yz also doesn't seem to work i have to take one more coordinate namely i put y square minus z square okay after that it is a matter of checking that when you pass down to p2 obviously so for if if you put, if you replace each x y z with minus x minus y minus z then this side rhs here remains unchanged okay don't just change x to minus x that is not the idea that is not required when you change minus it is minus x minus y minus that so that is the antipodal point of x y z so that goes to same point therefore this will give you a function f bar from p2 to r4 now here you have to see that function is injective that's all okay so that part i'm going to leave you as a pleasant exercise verify it okay i will go to another interesting uh, example once again this also something like a non orientable surface p2 was one such this was not this also cannot be embedded in r3 but similar efforts to p2 seem to work here also and we will get a embedding in r4 okay so first of all i have to explain what is this klein bottle k okay it is a quotient a double quotient a 2 to 1 mapping is there of the torus s1 cross s1 okay what is the action action is important here by the diagonal action okay of minus 1 plus 1 z2 okay so diagonal action has to be taken very carefully here u we going to u inverse and minus v the one coordinate you take inverse multiplicative inverse another coordinate you take additive inverse so s1 minus 1 is just this is the antipodal action so this one is is uh, the multiplicative inverse okay first of all let us work out a geometric way of obtaining klein bottle out of the above definition suppose i take this as definition okay this is not a standard definition but now let us try using the well known geometric way of getting a klein bottle out of the torus the torus s1 cross s1 is defined as the quotient of a rectangle i cross i where the four sides are identified in a particular way the zero comma 1 cross zero is identified with zero comma 1 cross 1 so that is the opposite side right in the same oriented fashion similarly zero zero cross zero comma 1 will be identified with one cross zero comma 1 okay again the opposite sides so that is the identification here this is the square one cross one so this bottom thing goes to the top thing here see the 
the, the double arrow and double arrow are indicating that. You see triple arrow on vertical lines, they are identified. This is the identification. The arrow uh, tells you how the identifications are done. For example, here an element can look like t comma zero. So where it will go, it will be identified with t comma one. Similarly, zero comma s will be identified with one comma s here. Okay. So this is the this is the once you identify this case a torus. But to get the Klein bottle, I have to do some more identification. Because on the torus, I have an action, u going to u inverse and v going to minus v. Right? So that is what I have identified here. I, I have tried to put it here. Okay. So what happens is if you look at this arrow, the bottom line here, this will get identified with the middle one dot 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 one in the opposite direction. These, these elements will be there all the time. There is no identification there. Okay. But what further identification? What happens is this will be identified that part. Okay, this is getting identified this way anyway. All right, and this is getting identified anyway. All these points here, they will be identified with corresponding points here. Something here will come here and so on in the opposite direction. Around the half of this one, there will be self identifications. The, there will be no identifications, sorry, within the interior of this half rectangle everything above will be identified some point here therefore the upper half part of this rectangle is unnecessary so i have cut it off and represented a half rectangle here of the original one now the identifications of this one will give you crime bottom so this is the geometric way Okay, to justify all these things rigorously, you have to write down formula. That is the only way. Okay, so that's what we have to do. Okay, so this is the idea, uh, diagonal action u comma v going to u inverse comma minus v. Since u and v are now representing elements of S1, S1 cross S1, but I am representing them on the uh, plane only after identification, namely t going to e power 2 pi i t, you will get an element of S1. So, what is the corresponding identification of this one in terms of real coordinates? So, I have to convert that and that amounts to the following thing. T, if you represent T, the element u is represented by T means what? u equal to e power 2 pi i t. Okay. So, this V is represented by S means V equal to E raised to 2 pi i S. That is the meaning of this. So, when you get that, U inverse will be represented by 1 minus T. Okay. Whereas, minus V will be represented by S plus half. Okay. This is very easy. You apply E power 2 pi i T, what happens? e power 2 pi i 1 minus t is just what? It's just the inverse of e power 2 pi i t. And this is a minus of that because half of 2 pi i, 2 pi i half will be pi i. So e raised to pi i is multiplied by minus 1. Okay. So that's all I have done. And the second part is, see, t, this is in the, in the uh, t first half. In the second half, t comma s will be 1 minus t comma s minus half because plus half goes away out of this one. So I have to take the half less than 2 less less equal to I have to take s minus 1. So these, these two are the same effect but the actual uh, map will be s minus 2 because I have to be within a 0 less than 1 less than half. 
if s is bigger than half s plus half will go out of one right so that's why i have to write like so the entire quotient map can be restricted to s equal to 0 1 cross 0 half you don't need a second part at all this part now in the interior of s there are no identifications let us check what are the identifications on the boundary okay so this is what i have already done the two vertical sides have to be identified as indicated by the arrows the lower horizontal arrow 0 comma 1 cross 0 gets identified with 0 1 cross half in the reverse direction why are the map t comma 0 going to 1 minus t comma half i have to just understand what is happening here when you put when you put s equal to 0 and s equal to half okay so this is what happens thus the paper model of klein bottle is given by the rectangle on the right hand side here in the picture which i have shown paper model means you have to indicate how you are going to identify the boundaries that's all okay so this is the explanation of how to construct a paper model of klein bot all right but now i go back to my definition of the klein bottle as a quotient of s1 cross s1 by the identification namely u comma v identified with u inverse comma minus v okay once again this time i am denoting this a b c d etc inside r4 itself because s1 is embedded in r2 so s1 cross s1 is embedded in r4 from r4 to r4 i want to take a map such that whenever two points are identified they are going to same point if and only if so that is the same same technique <clears throat> so what do i do take a b c d remember these are all a b a square plus b square is 1 c square plus d square is 1 that is the condition in uh, in r4 for this to represent s1 cross s1 okay let it go to 2 plus a c square minus d square 2 c d into 2 plus a again then b c b d okay and take its intersect in this restriction on s1 cross s1 this map is completely defined on the whole of r wall but i am only interested in s1 cross s1 means put a square plus b square equal to 1 and c square plus b square equal to 1 that's all so once you put that you can think of a b c d as some sin theta cos theta uh, cos theta sin theta and cos psi sin of psi something like that also you can try to okay the two action in this notation corresponds to a b c d right a b gets a minus b is inverse c d goes to minus c minus t so this is negative no now it is a matter of straight forward verification to check that f factors down to define a continuous injective map f bar from k to r bar which is just by the similar argument k is an embedding okay how i got this one if you look at 2 plus a c square minus d square 2 plus c d d If you write a is cos theta sine theta cos psi sine psi up to here the third coordinate it gives you an embedding of s1 cross s1 in R3. So you put one more coordinate here to get an embedding of R4 of the project of the Klein bottle. Okay. So this two plus a corresponds to, you know, the 
the center of one of the circle is shifted to 2 comma 0. See, and this is 2 plus a, 2 plus a. And then this is cos 2 theta and that is sin 2, sin 2 theta. <laughs> so you just take instead of theta, 2 theta, so that that will give you when you help uh, help to give you map into P2. That is a slight modification there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so we have done something nice today. Let us stop here. Next time we will take two more properties which are very, very important again. The separation properties, regularity and normality. Thank you.